Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't been here before. Um, get ready to leave a comment at the end of the video and tell me what you think. And if you don't like the video, let me know why in the comments so I can try and improve as we go along. Appreciate that. Anyway, we have a new Knight Commander. This one came through in Lord of the Rings in the Commander set associated with, and it is Erwin Shield Maiden, two blue, red, and white for a 5-4. Uh, literary creature, human knight, first strike, like that as a set of stats, a little bit awkward to cast, but like the set of stats. But at the beginning of combat on your turn, if another human enters the battlefield under your control this turn, create two, two, two red human knight creature tokens with trample and haste. Then if you control six or more humans, draw a card. Wow. Okay. So herself plus the token she makes gives us three creatures. We only have any three other humans in play. And if we can make them knights as well, we've got some synergies going on here. And yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Let's see what we get. So mana base as usual first. Um, red, blue, and white lands all the way through. I have chucked in Arid Mesa. That can come out if you want to try and keep the cost down a little bit. But most of it... Um, is here we're playing five of each basic just because doing that side we've got the mystic monastery which is a cheaper version of the um Ragurin triome which is the expensive version of mystic monastery however you want to look at it both do the same thing basically you're never going to cycle unless you want to get your lands in play um well unless you're really desperate for some way of controlling the board but there's not that many control ones in here <laughs> Rest of it is all here. Reliquary Tower was also here along with Temple of the False God because at the end of the day, Erwin is five mana to cast and I don't want to be discarding things and this really does help us recast her when she dies. As for the actual artifact side of the ramp, which I'll always cover next, Mox Tantalite, Soul Talisman, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet and one of each of the talismans of the pair, colour pairs, plus Coalition Relic to help us just build up those charge counters and get there even quicker. But what I've tried to do, obviously, we like humans and I like knights. So there's quite a few number, quite a high number of knights in here. There's also quite a high number of humans. Basically, everything's either a human or a knight. There's nothing in between. All the human knights. I don't think I've picked anything that isn't a human. So I'm hoping as I go through this deck tech, you can see that. Which means, you know, if we can play them in our main phase, we're always going to hopefully start drawing a card because we will have six more, more humans in play. So control side. Condemn, Path to Exile. Creatures, Sarah Ascendant, because I'm playing a white deck, and why wouldn't you want to try and get a 6 6 fly or a lifelink on turn one? Weathered Wayfarer lets us go and get our lands if someone's got more than us and we're running a bit short. We are only playing 36, so it's possible we'll be activating this a fair bit. Fervent Champion is our first of our knights because, yeah, it's got to have someone in with it, Irwin. Um, and it gets plus target like target attacking knight control gets plus one plus one until the end of turn. Not worried about the equip. I haven't gone with the equip route with this. Luminar aspirant is a human that chucks around some plus one plus one coaches. Like that plan. The flowering of the white trees back. We've got a lot of legends. We've got a lot of creatures. We might as well have this in to give us some warden pump. Knight of the white orchid for the land search. Hopefully we can get there. Marshal of Salvia pumps up all our knights and lets us do a little bit of tapping. Pumping up is more important for me. Right, Prince Imral the Fair. Whenever you draw your second card, each turn draw a create a 1-1 one, one human soldier token. We've got no real way of drawing it, but yeah, I want to have the prince in as well, just because it's fun. You probably drop the prince and play something useful like, actually... I've got actually, yeah, I've got ways of drawing second cards, so we will leave it in. Um, so you can drop this and play something else if you want to, but I've left it in for now, and you'll see why in a minute. Inspiring Veteran lets us pump all our knights again. Lightning Helix gives us a bit of control. Lauren of the Third Path is human, blows up the usual artifacts, enchantments we don't want to play, and a little bit of card draw for you and the other person who's behind. Siege Veteran does the whole plus one, plus one counter again. Sky Hunter Strike Force. As long as you control your commander, other creatures you control have melee. Um, so whenever it attacks, it gets plus one, plus one until the end turn. For each opponent, you attack this combat. Hmm. Melee works. Like melee. Good card in this deck, one feels. Midly, it is a cat, not a human. But it is a knight, so exception. <laughs> 
Adeline Resplendent Cathars here. Uh, you all know what Adeline does by now, along with Fire Slayer, Fiend Slayer, Paladin. Um, first Strike, Life Link can't be the target of red or black spells. It's different to protection. This still can be blocked by red and black creatures. Be aware of that. Knight Exemplar pumps all our knights up, makes them indestructible. Mirroring Crusader is the double strike pro black, pro green guy, which is really quite nice along with paladin on vic which is the first strike pro black pro red guy so you know a little bit different from fiend slayer we um yeah anyway <laughs> court hussar lets us draw a card and we will pay it for, we won't be sacrificing it we'll be paying it for blue white and one other as much as possible occasionally you may have to pay it for it and try and get the card if you're land short or color short but try and pay it with the white to keep it in play chaos warp controls the board Jeskai's will hopefully gives us we can play this once Eowyn is in play just so we can get the extra mana and the extra three cards to cast Prismari command just a bit of removal bit of card draw bit of treasures bit of destroy artifact just a little bit of everything you want really with a blue red spell Theoden king of Rohan is also here uh, whenever Theoden or another human is the battlefield under your control target creature gains double strike until the end of turn this combo with the humans coming in here is really very nice. Mantis Rider, just flying Vigilance Haste in the air. Um, Coalition Relic I've mentioned. Berrigan of the Guard enters the battlefield with another human into the battlefield as you control. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one and gain Vigilance until the end of turn. So get this in play. Play one of the cheap humans before combat so everything gets Vigilance. And yeah, apart from the tokens you create here, obviously. Um, Inspiring Captain just pumps our team up for a turn. Quain, Pride of the Femoret, gives all our creatures with first strike, double strike. There's a few, not many, but there's a few, so that helps. Mangara, the Diplomat, is just there for the card draw. Um, Muriel, Shield of Argave, is here for the soldier creations that it does. Hero of Bladehold, Battlecry, get it in the right order, get your creatures gone to go, fantastic. Eomo, Marshal of Rohan. Whenever one or more attacking legendary creatures you control die, untap all creatures you control, and there's an additional combat phase. Yeah, okay then. Only happens once, but yeah, one extra additional combat phase could be the difference between surviving and dying. So yeah, we're going with it. Hero of Oxford Bridge um, attacks. Ooh. Creatures with power one or less can't block this turn, so that's very nice. Thank you very much. Um, Johira, Weatherlight Captain, because the amount of legendary creatures we have made sense to have this in to draw an extra card or two. Outlaw's Merriment gives us a random human at the beginning of each turn. Um, some of them are useful, some of them not so useful, but you know, lifelink, trample, pinging. Okay, we'll cope with that. Tori Devant, Fury Rider, attacks all other attacking creatures you control get plus one, plus one until the end of the turn. Other red attacking creatures you control get trampled. White creatures get to be untapped. Nice. Um, and then Blade Historian. Attacking creatures you control have double strike. Not really sure why they printed this in Strixhaven. I still don't understand it. But hey, it's human. It works. It's fantastic. Let's go with it. Knight Errant of Eros. Just so we can do the whole Convoke thing. And then see if we can get some good cards out of the Convoking. Cathar's Crusade pumps our team up. Fumigate controls the board for us and gains us a bit of life back. Teferi untaps the land or tucks something away that's annoying us. And the Council of Four is just another human, but you know, get some extra knights, get some extra cards if people play more than two spells a turn, which late game in Commander they mainly do. Venter's here as well. Venter, I think, is underplayed. The minus one ability. Yeah, everyone knows about the first one, exile target permanent you own you own, return it to the battlefield under your control. Yeah, whatever. It's a blink effect fine. The minus one people forget about. Creatures can't be blocked this turn. It's a fantastic way of alpha striking your opponents out because everyone forgets about it. So bear that in mind. Um Two uh, Kunik Sky Knights, it just gives us some soldiers when we cast some instant sorceries, but it's a 3 3 flying for five, so it's a little bit over the top, but it is another human and another knight, so you know, helps with the card draw here. Adrienne, Captain of the Guard, does the whole melee thing as well and gives everything else melee. Another way of doing it. And the here is resolved from the aftermath set. Um, creatures you control get plus one and have haste. Thank you. 
And then at the beginning of your end step, exile any number of non-token artifacts or creatures you control. Return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next upkeep. Be careful with it. I like it for the haste and the plus one, plus zero. You can save some creatures you think things are going to die. Um, but be aware, I don't, I'm not 100% sure how this sets up properly. I'll be honest about it. Because I think if Nahiri gets destroyed, you lose the creatures in exile. But I'm not sure. They may come back anyway because of the triggered ability when you did it. But not sure. Be wary of it. But the plus one, plus zero, and haste is really worthwhile anyway from my point of view. Farewell. Uh, <laughs> Lena, selfless champion. Just gives us some soldiers. It gives a way of making everything indestructible, which is cool. Um... Sun Quain, Lord of Wu, gives all our creatures horsemanship. Again, it's a bit like making them unblockable with um, old vents over here, but yeah, you may have flyers around, so yeah, can't be blocked. Can't be blocked except by creatures with horsemanship. Hmm. Yeah, we'll go with that. Wall Storm Surge, just deal some damage as things come into play. And Flying Crane technique, untap all creatures we control. They gain flying and double strike until the end of turn. <laughs> Take the knights to the air. Think about the horses jumping over fences or something. If High Arcanist is here, just so we can suspend it and then do the whole if smage bit if we need to. Blasphemous Axe control the board. And the final human, Wildfire Awakener. Um, convoke with your creatures. Enter the battlefield with a whole load of 1-1 one, one red elemental creature tokens that when it becomes tapped, it deals 1 damage to target player. Just do that for a few seconds. You can see how good that gets with this. Right, but that's it. That's my take on Eowyn, the Shield Maiden. Again, another Knight Commander, considering we had the Eminence one a few weeks back, and now we've got Eowyn as well. It's more of a human thing. You can go more human tribal on it. You can play some other things like the life gain guys in humans um, and just go down the whole human road if you want to. But I want to try and combine it with the knights because it's always a bit of fun. So I hope you enjoyed the deck take. Let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you've hit the subscribe button. And yeah, you can come and see me watch and play them on Twitch. There's a link down below in my thing. Come and give me a follow over there. We're sitting at 187 over here at the moment on Twitch. So yeah, it's all good. And if you can come and join me over there and have some games on MTGO, feel free free um stream thursday night sunday afternoons uk time get a bonus stream in occasionally once you're following me on twitch and you've made yourself known you get access to my discord as well so bear that in mind and you'll know when i'm going live things always put on discord first so have fun hope you enjoyed the video and i'll hopefully see you on twitch soon take care bye